another simple device which often goes unnoticed. In most cases, it hangs overhead amongst pipes, lighting fixtures, girders, and conveyor rails, heating the air in a manufacturing area or warehouse space. Unit heaters may take a variety of forms and sizes, but their operation is essentially the same. A heat transfer medium is circulated through a coil, and either room or outside air is blown across the coil by the unit's integral fan. About 80% of these units are used for heating, to maintain comfortable temperatures in work areas, to neutralize cold air infiltration, to prevent pipeline freezing, or to provide a controlled environment for finished goods. Nine times out of ten, steam is the heat transfer medium used for these applications. This simple heating device, located out of the way, is often neglected or ignored, and that is almost sure to be costly in the long run. Uncorrected leaks and undetected flaws, such as improper condensate removal, impaired fan operation, or dirt deposits, lead to inefficient operation, if not complete failure. A failed or inefficient unit heater will result in wasted energy, as well as worker discomfort, improper storage temperatures for finished products, or frozen pipes, leading to downtime, excessive maintenance costs, and employee absenteeism. Such problems are common, but avoidable. Correct unit heater selection and installation will lead to fewer heating disruptions, and a program of regular inspection and maintenance will further reduce wasteful failures. Combining wise selection, proper installation, and careful maintenance will assure greater service life from your unit heaters, and thus a reduction of unnecessary repair and replacement costs. The design, materials, and construction of unit heaters are important considerations in their selection. These factors play a large role in determining the service life of the unit and the amount of maintenance required. Since unit heaters are located overhead, often in locations making repair or replacement difficult, it makes sense that a unit requiring less maintenance while providing a lengthy service life is preferable. Corrosion due to galvanic action of two dissimilar metals is a frequent problem. Providing headers and tubes of the same materials will reduce this destructive action. Heavy-duty fins and tubes mean longer life and the ability to withstand high-pressure steam or compressed air cleaning. Cores made of steel or stainless steel have better resistance to internal and external corrosion and can handle unexpected higher pressures and temperatures should a PRV fail. Heavy-duty, all-welded steel cores can be welded should repair become necessary, eliminating the need to isolate individual tubes, thus reducing the heater's capacity. Repair and cleaning will be easier if the heater has removable panels. Totally enclosed, fan-cooled, industrial-type ball-bearing motors require less maintenance and will last longer. How the unit is installed can have a bearing on its efficiency and service life. The mounting height of a unit heater is determined by the physical restrictions of the space it heats. The CFM of the fan and the heater's final air outlet temperature are then selected to conform to the area's needs and limitations. The air outlet temperature should be between 80 and 130 degrees Fahrenheit. The higher the air outlet temperature, the more buoyant the air and the more difficult it becomes to force the air down to the area to be heated. Increasing the CFM of the fan lengthens the effective throw, the distance the air will travel, but may produce an objectionable evaporative cooling effect on workers. It will also raise the noise level. Horizontal throw unit heaters should be positioned to discharge nearly parallel to outside walls, angled slightly toward the wall to create a wiping effect. This neutralizes drafts and cold air infiltration at their source. The airflow of multiple units should overlap to produce a rotational circulation of air in the heated space. Install vertical throw heaters where necessary, but position them where they will not blow directly on workers. 
Unit heaters must be adequately supported so the weight of the unit does not cause undue stress on the piping or the heater itself. To prevent condensate from entering the unit, decreasing its efficiency, steam supply lines should be taken from the top of distribution piping and sloped upward toward the heater. From the heater's condensate outlet, provide a 10 to 12 inch drip leg and a T with a 6 inch dirt pocket below. From the side of the T, install a strainer and a steam trap. Install the trap as close to the T as possible. Provide isolating valves for servicing and unions to facilitate removal. When traps discharge to an overhead return, install a check valve immediately downstream from the trap. Be sure there is adequate pressure to lift the condensate to the return. Remember, every two feet of lift reduces the differential pressure across the trap by one PSI. For constant pressure applications, use inverted bucket or floating thermostatic traps. On variable pressure applications, use inverted bucket steam traps with thermic bucket vents or floating thermostatic traps. For most applications, a 3 to 1 safety factor provides best results. The simplest and most common type of temperature control for unit heaters is a thermostat, which turns the fan's electric motor on or off. Under this type of control, unit heaters emit approximately 10% of their rated capacity while the motor is not running. Therefore, do not oversize unit heaters, since this will cause the unit to cycle infrequently, resulting in a greater heat loss to the ceiling. A regular inspection and maintenance of unit heaters is recommended. Intervals for inspection are often determined by experience and depend upon the cleanliness of available steam and the condition of the environment in which the units are used. A dated checklist provides a record of inspection and decreases the likelihood of damage or inefficient operation due to neglect. Dirt and dust accumulations should be removed from fan, motor, and coil surfaces. Accumulations on the fan can cause imbalance, shortening bearing and motor life. Dirt accumulations on a motor decrease its cooling ability, which can also lead to premature failure. These deposits must be removed from coil surfaces to prevent reduction of heat transferability. Motors should be lubricated in accordance with the manufacturer's recommendations. Inspect traps, strainers, and check valves periodically. If a trap has failed open, the heater will continue to function, but large amounts of steam and money will be wasted. If the trap is not discharging properly, or if its strainer is plugged, condensate will accumulate, reducing the heater's efficiency and increasing the possibility of water hammer and corrosion. Corrosion, due to accumulations of condensate, starts with the presence of carbonates in the boiler feed water. These carbonates dissolve and release carbon dioxide gas, which then travels with the steam through the distribution piping. If the condensate collects in the heat exchanger and is allowed to cool below the saturation temperature of the steam, these gases will combine with the water, forming carbonic acid. This acid is extremely corrosive and will eventually eat through the tubes in the heater's core, necessitating repair or replacement. A forgotten unit heater can be costly. However, with proper selection, installation, and routine maintenance, leaks failures and the discomfort, headaches, and expense they cause can be minimized. For information on selection and size of the heaters, talk to your Armstrong Hunt representative. He has years of experience with steam and steam equipment. He can help you solve your present unit heater problems and help prevent them.